All right, we'll head uh, to Ukraine now, which, of course, is dealing with the aftermath of the Hekova Dam collapse, as Kyiv and Moscow both accuse each other of being responsible. That aftermath is, of course, being played out in the press today as well. Our press reviewer, Diptyka Laurent, is here to take a look. Well, Aaron, who uh, or what provoked the dam collapse, why or how? We don't really have the answers to these questions, but as the French paper La Croix notes on its front page, uh, one thing is for sure, it's that the destruction of uh, the uh, Kakov Kakovka uh, dam on the Dnipro River in the Kherson region is a, a major turning point uh, in the war in Ukraine, both for Russian and Ukrainian forces. You uh, have uh, this also making front page uh, of the British Daily, the Financial Times, uh, which uh, echoes comments made by Ukrainian uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky as saying that Russia set off an environmental bomb by breaching uh, the dam. Uh, the FT says that it is also a blow to Ukraine's counter-offensive plans. Erin. What about from the Russian press, Dipti? How are they reacting? Well, let's uh, show you then uh, Commerçant, the, um, um, the, one of the more major Russian dailies. Uh, the collapse, uh, the paper says, will change everything from an environmental point of view, but also in terms of the risks uh, posed to the Zaporizhia power plant. Uh, the paper says that experts believe that there was no explosion and that the dam collapsed uh, really because of structural damage linked to previous shelling. Meanwhile, uh, videos have uh, emerged on uh, social media showing the aftermath of the dam collapse for locals there. There's uh, one video here. Let's see if we can bring it up for you. Uh, that shows, uh, it's from a Ukrainian account showing um, uh, um, the rescue of cats and dogs in the local area. And you really get an idea of just uh, how uh, desperate the situation is there for humans and animals, of course. Uh, there was an earlier video as well uh, that really shows uh, exactly what happened when the dam burst. You see houses actually floating away. It really uh, brings home uh, the reality of what's happening over there, Erin. All right, Dipti, we'll move on now to another story making headlines. That's the shock merger of the Saudi-based uh, LIV Gulf League and the PGA. Well, yeah, it caps two years of very, very bad blood between the two uh, between the two leagues, which saw golfers who joined uh, the Saudi league being banned from the PGA Tour, the longstanding professional golfers association. Now, the Saudi uh, paper Arab News, uh, not a surprise, is rejoicing uh, in the merger in its front page coverage here on the bottom there. Uh, it calls that merger um, uh, um, uh, hole in one, uh, the paper saying that uh, uh, the uh, Saudi-based LIV golf circuit wa was a much-needed alternative to the usual tour events for golf. Now, I quote, the most bitter war to engulf a sport that has been around for six centuries is, has come to an end with this merger between the American PGA and European DP World Tour with the LIV, with Saudi's LIV Tour, a merger that also vindicates the Saudi LIV backers for believing in their product. That's uh, the perspective from the Saudi press. Now, from the Ang English-speaking press, it's not quite the same story. This is from... Uh, USA Today on its front page here in this column, uh, this writer says that the PGA LIV deal means that golf will never be the same. Um, the paper, the columnist uh, calling PGA and LIV organizers frauds. Uh, he says frauds who are now united in the one thing that matters most to the sport of golf, and that is making money. Um, the columnist accuses PGA to, uh, organizers of ignoring Saudi Arabia's uh, human rights record and calling the LIV circuit a, quote, unworthy, unserious rival. And you get pretty much the same perspective from the British Daily, The Guardian, here in this article, uh, which uh, echoes comments made by an expert that this deal is, the, is a gigantic victory for sports washing, uh, noting that it also transforms Saudi Arabia from a disruptor on the outside to now a major player when it comes to global sports, Erin. All right. Finally, from you then, Dipti, a new study shows us that the origins of humans pleasuring themselves dates back some 40 million years. Yeah, this is a new study uh, from uh, the uh, from University, Lon uh, University College London on uh, masturbation, male masturbation, because even scientists can't really figure out the origins of female masturbation. Um, researchers spent a lot of time, Erin, uh, sifting through documentation about masturbating apes from tens of millions 
of years ago. The study arose because researchers were trying to, uh, well, they were sort of came up uh, against what seemed to be, at least at, at first glance, an ethical con uh, evolutionary conundrum, rather, that masturbation is seen as wasteful and risky for reproduction purposes. So why was this monkey business going on? Well, from their research arose some answers. Masturbation was actually an essential part of evolution. Uh, for primates, for instance, it increased arousal, which meant that they could impregnate a mate quicker than a rival. Uh, it also improved the quality of their sperm. It also dropped, uh, dropped down um, infections of sexually transmitted uh, diseases. Uh, researchers say that the findings show that masturbation is not just for sexual arousal, but also uh, really a part of the reason why we're here today. All this thanks to our uh, masturbating uh, <laughs> ape ancestors from millions of years ago, Aaron. The things you learn on the press review. We'll <laughs> leave it at that then. Uh, Deep Tika Laurent, thank you very much.